My name is Ashley and I'm an international student from Kenya and I've had the privilege of serving on the powerhouse team I think for almost three years now. Oh dear, I didn't even realize it's that long. Um, so I did it for two years in my undergrad and then I went back home to Kenya for one year and came back and I've had the joy of serving in the team um, during this very interesting and uncertain 2020. Um, so my testimony into kids ministry, if I'm very honest, is one of organized chaos <laughs> and being a very reluctant um, joiner of the ministry and I think unexpected blessings and thanksgiving. Why I say number one, um, organized chaos and reluctant is because I actually did not ever in a million years see myself with children or working in the kids ministry. I was brought up in ministry, yes, but I always saw myself as a youth worker, hang out with teenagers or serving in the worship team because that's my background. And I actually used to make this joke with my family and used to tell my parents that chances of me having kids not going to happen because the common denominator between me and children generally used to be me saying hi and then bursting out into tears and me being absolutely petrified of doing something wrong and <laughs> so when I came to the UK I was so sure like yes I want to plug into a church and I remember during that period of time I came to Elim and when I came to Elim I was like okay um, this seems like a really great church this could be a home for me but at the same time if I'm not sure I'd come one Sunday disappear for three Sundays one Sunday disappear for two Sundays around that period of time every time I came um Emma who I now know as a fearless and amazing leader and also a really close personal friend every single time would stand up and say I'm looking for people to please join my youth ministry uh, my kids ministry sorry um please sign up we need team we need team I kind of felt a lot of things moving in my spirit and I was like oh okay god you know me and kids so this definitely isn't for me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pray about her a lot during this week and the more I began to pray the more I started feeling myself being urged and pushed towards it and I was just like okay god I really don't think this is for me but if this is what you're trying to say then god please definitely confirm it to me again I'm not going to check this weekend but in two weeks time definitely make her make the announcement and then if I must then I'll join and lo and behold that Sunday, two weeks later, I come, worship ends, we all sit down, who stands up on stage? Emma. And she's just like, hi guys, I'm here again, but I feel like the Holy Spirit is leading me to make this announcement one more time for one person who is being really stubborn, uh, but is meant to join my team. <laughs> so I was just like, God, I can't even deny that this is for me. And God, I do not like children. Children don't seem to like me either. But if you keep saying this, then okay, we'll give it a shot. And I'd love to sit here and tell you that my first Sunday, I went there and like, it was amazing. And the kids and I clicked and it was wow. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> On my first Sunday, Emma put me with the under fives because as you guys can tell, I have loads of energy. So she was like, oh, you'll be great with the younger kids. I walked into the room, I said hi to this really adorable little girl, and I said, hi, how are you doing? And she burst out crying, literally crying, clung to her mother's legs, refused to, to look at me. And then the following Sunday, Emma moved me to Roots, wasn't that great either and then she moved me into the year fives and sixes who at the time we had the most energetic diverse and charismatic group who one Sunday is angels the next Sunday you're like wow I it's been 15 minutes and I'm already exhausted <laughs> and all I know is that in that time I've always thought that like, oh, I'm joining kids ministry and God's going to use me to impact in their lives. And he's going to, that's, it's going to be very much a one-way transfer of skills and learning. But in that season, God taught me so much about myself. And I think the one thing that I would say that that season really taught me is that 
God, A, taught me the gift of patience. Two, God taught me that you don't serve from a place of, sometimes you don't serve from a place of overflow. Sometimes you don't serve from a place of joy. And sometimes you you don't even serve from a place where you feel like you're good enough to be in. But God's grace is sufficient and God is the one who really qualifies us and calls us. Because in that season, um, serving in kids ministry gave me a family. Serving in kids ministry gave me a support system because around that period of time, I didn't tell anyone really, but I was really struggling because back home, um, my dad had had a heart attack and most people didn't know. And in the fantastic sense of moving into a new country and um, culture, um, culture shock and everything else I got myself into probably not the wisest relationship at the time. And it's the people that I met on the kids team who became my family, the people who loved on me, showed me grace, showed, gave me peace. And working with the children taught me really what faith is. It showed me again what having a childlike faith is. Um, and then I remember my time in uh, kids ministry was coming to a close and one of the most amazing things that I found was that they really blessed and trusted me to help lead in um, the kids choir and I was really excited about this but again joining the kids choir I always thought like as one of the leaders I'm here to bring the hype the dancing everything I didn't think I'm the most amazing singer but I think one of the things that God also showed me is that he puts giftings in us for him to call them out as he so pleases, that he will call them out in the way that we think he should, but that his plans and his ways for us are so much greater. And even if he's marked us for ministry, that that can change in different seasons. I think when my time ended and I was going back home to Kenya, I was like, oh, okay, good. Uh, okay, God, um, thank you, God, for that season in my life. I'm going back to youth ministry. Um, yeah, all's good. The end's good. But I realized that the skills that I gained in, in kids' ministry here in Elam were not just for me, but for me to take back um, home. And I think for me, what struck me the most was I had never been in a church community that had such a loving SEN and inclusive culture and that's something that I learned from Emma and I saw for the first time in my life I think especially in my culture it's something that it is progressing and we're beginning to be a lot more inclusive but it's not the most accommodating and welcoming especially in 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 church settings and um through watching Emma's love and genuine care and wanting to ensure that um, all our SEN um, gifted kids are included in everything from worship to, to lessons, it really inspired me. And because of that, I'm so glad to say that when I went back to back home, I tried to bring that into our youth ministry. I tried to bring that into... Um, my service and we now have one of our first SEN worship leaders in the kids church and that for me was such a godsend because now she sings I think about once a month and it's began um, giving her that safe space and others like her to know that you know what they can serve too and they are just as precious and valuable in the kingdom and as well as even in terms of the songs. So I always kind of thought the songs that we do sometimes in in kids' church are for the kids. And of course, they are for the kids, but sometimes in the back of my mind, I'm just like, these things are just really exhausting. Oh my days, it's a workout. I feel every single cardio that I have missed throughout the week. Um, but I began to realize that they're not just action songs and they're not just cardio, but they are prophecies over these kids lives they are impacting their day-to-day -day image of themselves and their relationship with God because um I happily went and taught some of the songs that we do here in Elam back home um during our kids camp and the thing that surprised me the most especially I don't know if you guys know the song wherever I go oh oh oh, oh wherever I go oh God is with me wherever I go and when we did that during the kids camp at my church it was a hit and 
the rest of the month, I would walk around church and a lot of the kids would come up to me and start singing it. And I began to realize that this song began to change their understanding of God. Instead of him being that high up God who wants to just smite them when they do do things wrong, that song began a shift in their culture and understanding of God as actually God is my best friend. God is um, greater than any superhero. God is greater than <laughs> any superpower that I can have. And he wants to be my friend. And that's, I think, the power that I began to realize with the song is that they're not just cardio for us as adults, but they're also declarations and our engagement with the kids, our energy, our joy, our vulnerability with them for them to even be able to see that actually we're not perfect. We also struggle is part of them seeing that just like the body of Christ is so diverse and different and has different strengths and capabilities so do they and all of them all of that is just as loved and as perfect um so that's my story of joining um kids ministry and my testimony and if i'm honest i would say that i i'm definitely not perfect i am not and like the a best case scenario i am just one reluctant <laughs> volunteer who turned into an empty vessel who is so grateful that God loved me enough to use me. And through being available, even in my reluctance, God has been able to not just support kids here in Elam, but also kids back home in my church, both in the in the, the Sunday school and in the youth ministry. And I think that's really what um, each and every one of us is called to do, is that we're not called to be perfect. Sometimes we're just called to be willing and be part of sloppy progress, especially in this 2020. Being an available vessel is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to yourself, the kids, and also one of the best offerings you can give unto God. Oh, 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 oh.